welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make this very simple and easy uh, crop top very cute for summer and a very quick project i mean who doesn't like a quick crochet project um i'm very sure most of you guys would like this one and will fall in love with its very simple construction and how everything is put together so for the materials you will need a four millimeter crochet hook a darning needle a pair of scissors and literally one ball of yarn so if you would like the written pattern it's already available on my etsy shop bravery and coffee shop so uh let's get started So you're going to grab your yarn and your hook and you're going to make a slip knot. After your slip knot, you're going to make a chain of two and you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with one single crochet, insert your hook, pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over pull through two and then one double crochet into the same exact chain. So the very first chain is going to get a total of two stitches, one single crochet and one double crochet, and that marks the end of row one. So let's go on to row two. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and you are going to go into the very first stitch, which should be a double crochet, and you're going to go into it with one single crochet, one double crochet, and one single crochet all in the very first stitch and then into the single crochet stitch you're going to make one double crochet one single crochet and one double crochet so uh, you should notice that each of the first um, each of the stitches from the first row has gotten three stitches and row two should bring us to a total of six stitches so let's go on to row three row three you're going to chain one turn your work you're going to place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet in each single crochet so since we ended our row with a double crochet you're going to turn your work after chaining one you're going to go into the very first stitch with a single crochet since uh, from the previous row it's a double crochet then you're going to make a double crochet into the next single crochet a single crochet into the next double crochet a double crochet into the next single crochet a single crochet into the next double crochet and a double crochet into the very last single crochet and this should bring us to the same number of stitches as the previous row since we haven't made any increases or decreases. So we should be having a total of six stitches for row three. Let's go on to row four. Row four is going to be an increase row. And just like row two, we shall increase in the very first stitch and the very last stitch. Now, um, you're going to chain one, turn your work. Now into the very first stitch, you're going to place one single crochet one double crochet and one more single crochet all in the first stitch and then you're going to go into the next stitch and place a double crochet into that single crochet one single crochet into the double crochet one double crochet into the single crochet one single crochet into the double crochet and you should be left with a single crochet stitch so we're going to go into it with one double crochet, one single crochet, and one more double crochet. And that means we have increased both at the beginning of our row and at the end of the row. That marks the end of row four. And row five, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Row five is a non-increase round. So you're going to go into each double crochet with a single crochet 
and each single crochet with a double crochet all the way across alternating between single crochet and double crochet so you sh should notice by now that each row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet unless stated otherwise so somewhere ahead we shall change that but uh, for now this is what we have each row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet so that marks the end of row five row six is basically going to be the same as row four you're going to chain one turn your work place one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet all in the first single crochet stitch all in the first double crochet stitch sorry so one single crochet one double crochet one single crochet all in the first stitch and then one double crochet into the next single crochet for the middle part you just keep alternating between single crochet and double crochet making sure you place a single crochet into each double crochet and a double crochet into each single crochet until you get to the second last stitch so when you get to the second last stitch you should have placed a single crochet into the double crochet now for the very last one which is this one which should be a single crochet stitch you're going to place one double crochet one single crochet and one double crochet all in the same stitch that way you have increased at the end of the row and at the beginning of the row as well so we're going to keep alternating between the increase and non-increase rows and you should notice at this point that the even rows are the increase rows and the odd rows are the plain rows of no increases so just keep alternating between the two until uh, let me just check on the written pattern for you guys until you have a total of um, let me see here until you have a total of 12 rows for size extra small 14 rows for size small 16 for size medium size large will be 18 rows extra large will be 20 rows and XXL will be a total of 22 rows so just keep um, going as long as you're following the same exact gauge um, you should be fine so just keep alternating between the two rows and I'll meet you back when I have my desired number of rows so guys here we are with our triangular shape and um, if I place my measuring tape across the base of the triangle I am getting about 7.5 inches and when I slightly stretch it I am getting my 8 inches so um, you're going to continue alternating between rows 3 and 4 until um, the upper part of your panel which is this one the base of the triangle measures measurement B when slightly stretched and you should make sure you're ending with an increase row so the increase row is the one where we increase at the beginning and at the end so that means we are going to end up or working a total of um, an even number of rows because our even rows are the ones that uh, get an increase both at the beginning and at the end of the row so let's go on to the next part the pattern says for the next three rows you're going to repeat row three and remember row three is the non-increase row so you're going to just chain one turn your work place a single crochet in each double crochet make sure you're already starting with a single crochet so single crochet into the double crochet and double crochet into the next single crochet and repeat this all the way across so we're coming to the end of our very first row of no increase 
So I told you we need a total of three rows of no increase. So this is the very first one and I'm placing my last double crochet into the last single crochet of the previous row. And you can see that the triangular shape has started getting flat edges. So you're going to repeat this two more times, repeating row three, which is the non-increased row. So chain one turn and then place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet in each single crochet. So repeat this until you get your three rows of non increase and I'll meet you guys back to show you what to do next. All right guys, after your three rows of no increases, you should have something that looks like this. The shape of the triangle should have changed into something like this on the edges. It's something flat around this part. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to start creating decrease rows. And uh, for this, we are going to decrease both at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row, just like we did for the increase rows. We were increasing both at the beginning and at the end for the increase rows of the uh, first part of the top. So now the second part of the top we are going to be decreasing to get to a pointed tip just like we started here. So let me show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to chain one, turn my work. This is a decrease row. So chain one, turn your work, skip the first two stitches. So you're going to skip the double crochet, skip the single crochet and into the next double crochet you're going to place a single crochet there. So one single crochet into the third stitch, which should be a double crochet. So one single crochet into it, and we're going to continue to place one double crochet in each single crochet, and one single crochet in each double crochet all the way across, until you have a total of three stitches left on your row. So I have three stitches left. As you can see, we have this one, this one, and this one. So um, at this point, you should be on a single crochet and then the three last stitches. So you're going to skip over the next two stitches and then into the very last stitch, you're going to place a double crochet. So you should notice that even now, we are starting with a single crochet and ending with a double crochet. So let's go on to the next row, which should be row 20, row 21, sorry, row 21. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. This should be a non-increase row, so uh, a non-decrease row, sorry, a plain row of just normal stitches. So this should resemble row three. So you're going to go into the first stitch with a single crochet and then a double crochet into the next single crochet. So we're coming to the end of row 21, which is a non-decrease row, and I'm placing a double crochet into the very last single crochet of the previous row. So this is what you should have. Now we're going to keep alternating between the decrease row and the non decrease row, which is the plain row. Just keep alternating until you have two stitches left on your row. And I'll be back to show you what to do. Now for the next row, you're going to just chain one, turn your work, and just for the just as we did for the decrease row, uh, we're going to skip the first two stitches and into the next uh, stitch, which should be a double crochet, we are placing a single crochet there. And then continuing with our pattern, placing a double crochet into each single crochet and vice versa until we come to the end of the row when we have a total of three stitches left and we shall do our next decrease. So I'm demonstrating this one more time so that uh, we don't get any confusion when it comes to what to do. So this is our decrease row. 
So we're coming to the end of the row and we have three stitches left and you should skip them, skip two stitches and then go into the very last one with one double crochet. So another thing that you'll notice is on the decrease rows we shall be creating these little holes on the side edge of our top on one side. We don't create those holes here. The holes are not created there, but they are automatically created on this end. So if you see this happening, just leave it. We are going to use these holes to, um, to lace up our top at the end. So they are essential. If you see this, don't try to block it. It's like part of the design, but it's created automatically within the design as we work. So we are on our non decrease row. You chain one. And then turn your work and place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet into each single crochet. So just go all the way across. So I'm going to keep alternating between those two rows until I have a total of two stitches left on my row. And you should notice that your work has started coming in. As you can see here, that means we are creating decreases and at some point we are going to run out of stitches. So that's why I'm telling you, keep working until you have a total of two stitches on your row. So just go ahead and do that. I'll meet you back somewhere around this point. So here is a little update of how everything should be looking like. In case you're wondering how your work should be progressing, this is what it should be looking like. These holes should be evenly placed as you work your decrease rows and alternate between the decrease and the non-decrease rows. Okay guys, now I have a total of six stitches and I want to show you the next row where we shall end up with only two stitches. So we're going to chain one and turn, and this is our decrease row. So you're going to skip over two stitches, and into the third, you're going to place a single crochet. So go into the third stitch with a single crochet, and this should leave us with a total of three stitches. And since this is a decrease row, you're going to skip over two stitches and directly go into the very last stitch with a double crochet. All right, guys, after your double crochet, that will mark the end of your um, panel. And you're going to just chain one. So let's see what we have. We have a diamond-like shape. If you're to look closely, we have this. I have my laptop here because I'm trying to follow the written pattern to the T so that uh, in case you purchase the pattern, you can follow along closely and comfortably without any alterations. So uh, this is what we have for this panel. And now we are going to go on to the next step. You're going to make an identical piece, just like the first one. And you're going to place your work like this in a way that these holes that were created on the side, actually uh, on the whole, diamond shape we have those holes along only one side of that diamond so you're going to place it like this and bring your second panel and place it like this so that the holes are in the same line and now we're going to go ahead and make a chain of about 200 to 250 so just make a slip knot and start making a simple chain of about 200 chains or 250 So I have my 200 chains here and we are going to lace it up into these holes so that we join the two panels together. So you're going to go into the very first hole here and put the chain and do the same on this side. Make sure the right side of the piece is facing you. So make sure you balance these strings. And then we are going to continue to lace it up all the way upwards. Just make an X, 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 like you would do a shoelace. So 
So you see what's going on here. So the reason for making a very long chain is so that we can have some excess when we make it all the way up. Make sure you don't run out of that string. So when you get all the way up, I think this is the last string that we have here, the last uh, chain space. It's somewhere not at the top. If you want to place it through the top, you can go ahead and skip a few rows and pull your strand through about two rows so that you can make it to the top of that corner like this. And then at this point, you can see how much yarn I'm left with, how much of the string I'm left with. If you want yours to be longer, that means you would have done about 300 chains or 400 so that you can play around with the tying of this chain at the top. But for me, I think this is okay for the demonstration bit of it. So <clears throat> you're going to just make a knot there and this will be the very top of your crop top and this is the middle chest area now where we've made the knot is the upper part of the top and where we started lacing up is the lower part now we're going to go ahead and grab our yarn again and we're going to create straps here 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 and here so you're going to get your yarn make a slip knot and make a chain of about 100 chains. All right, so I have my 100 chains here and before I chain one and cut my yarn, I'm going to attach where I want my strap to be. So I'm going to just go into that space with a slip stitch and then chain one and cut my yarn, pull through. So at that point, we have attached our very first strap on the top corner of the first panel. So we're going to just do that for all the other corners. Just make sure you go into a few stitches down so that we don't have an insecure strand or strap. So that's done. Now we are going to attach one here. So what I did was to first do a total of 100 chains four times. So that when it comes to attaching, I just keep picking up the, the straps. So we're done with this one as well. And then you're going to attach your very last one. All right, so after attaching all your straps, we have the ones on the side here, and then we have the ones at the top. You're going to just get your darning needle and weave in all your tails, or you can just go ahead and tie Wherever you have two strands, you can just go ahead and tie. So that you can get rid of all those shabby loose ends. So where you don't have two strings meeting at the same point, you can use your dining needle and weave in these tails.
All right, once you're done with this, you're going to also go to the strands, the straps that we created, and get rid of these loose ends at the end of the straps. Make sure everything is neat. And when you come to this part, you can decide uh, to maybe attach some beads or shells, or you can attach some tassels just to give it more beauty. I'm just giving you guys ideas, but at the moment I don't have any of those accessories with me, so I'll be leaving mine plain. But those tassels can be attached to these middle ones, or you can just leave it plain for a very simple look. All right, um, the upper straps are going to tie around your neck like this. And then these ones are going to go to the side. So when you turn your work to the wrong side, these ones are going to tie at the back like this. And that's basically it. And that's it for this video. This is how the final piece should look like. And in my next video, I'll be showing you how to make the mariposa crochet top. This is a design from last year, and uh, it kind of like basically stems from this and then creates a beautiful butterfly top design. So watch out for that. Make sure you're subscribed and your notification bells are turned on because we are going to create another beautiful butterfly crochet top from this design and we transform it into another version of a butterfly crochet top. So this is basically it. I'll be sharing with you some photos of the finished design. I love you guys so much. Thanks for all the love and support. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.